What's going on, YouTube? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Texas Street Stories, where we talk about what happens on these Texas streets. If you haven't already subscribed, help your boy out and hit the subscribe button. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about uh, what would happen if the Texas Syndicate would be released from Adseg. I had a respectful dialogue with one of my subscribers and he brought up a lot of good valid points. So let's get into it. What would happen if let's say tomorrow or the next day, the tech syndicate would be released from being a security threat group? And be placed in general population well for sure the way they're structured it would automatically be going to war they would try to reclaim what they lost and yes i agree with them that there would be a lot of blood being shed i agree on that point because they're structurally built by their constitution for their for their organization so whatever it takes to gain control <clears throat> that's what it is you know i don't know how federal prison works because never been there and i hope i never end up there but it works kind of differently from what I've been seeing on YouTube, you know, Thongo Blast is outnumbered, but Tech Syndicate, is Tech Syndicate there, out walking in population, you know, they, they're still able to function in population, not like in state where they're, they're sagged up, they really can't do too much. You know, so I agree with them on that point that if they were to get released, there it would be a bloodbath between the Dongles and the Tech Syndicate. Another point of view that he brought, or that we we brought back and forth, was the recruitment. You know. Where where are they going to recruit from? You know, that's why the blast was created. Because a lot of young dudes that were going in there with heavy sentences, they didn't want to take orders. You know, they didn't want to fall in line. They didn't want to. They wanted to be their own man. That's why it was created. So today's generation it's even worse. But well, what I mean worse is that there's no loyalty, there's no respect. It changes through generations, you know. It seems like the kids are more disrespectful, not mindful, less common sense. You know, they're lacking a lot of stuff. You know, I see it. I have an 18 year old and they feel like they know it all. You know, but then again, that's what got his ass seven felonies in one day. And we're still going through that. You know, because being 17, 18, he thinks he knows it all, but he ain't built like that. He ain't built for his life. So the recruitment, where would, where, where, where would it come from? Yeah, I'm not saying nobody would sign up because you will get a couple of people that will sign up. But it still won't be enough. You know? Because by the time y'all pile up bodies, y'all will get locked up again. Instead of coming out and being united and working something out.
And another topic he brought up was that the Thongo Blast wouldn't have been so big if they wouldn't be sagging the TS. And he has a valid point there. You know? Any organization, like he says, you sag them up, they lose control, they lose power. He got another valid point on that. You know, I agree with him on that. You know? And another point that he brought was for Unity. You know, when I went to prison in 2000, you know, I didn't get schooled until I hit a transfer facility and it was just basically like, a, you know, trying to save me from getting into a wreck. He laced me up there. I got a little bit of knowledge from him. He was... He was going back. I caught the train. I caught the, not the train, but the fucking, the bus with him up to Middleton. You know, he wasn't going to lace me up, but he seen me that I was going to get myself in trouble the way I was doing. I was, you know, I was already fighting over the domino table, you know, over, over something so stupid, you know. And once once he laced me up was the first thing. It's like, hey, you know, we don't we don't really play with any other races, you know, to avoid what just happened with you, you know. We kind of play amongst ourselves. You know, he started lacing me up, you know, we don't, you know, we don't eat, we don't spread, we don't share, you know. It's us, it's them, and that's the way it is. You know, I didn't question it. I get into medium custody. In medium custody, I was basically the only one from Dallas. There was another homeboy from Austin, a homeboy from West Texas. And the majority of the homeboys there were from H-Town, you know? And I would notice that a lot of the homeboys from Houston they would share their stuff with their sellies. You know, nobody said anything, you know? So I'm not gonna say nothing, you know? Even through, I was told that we weren't supposed to be, be doing that. But that started becoming a trend, you know? People from Houston, they, they, they roll a little bit different than what we do down here in Dallas, you know? Not, not to say that down here in Dallas is not intertwined and, inter and, and we don't we don't really mess with them, but you know we it's kind of different, you know. And I agreed on a lot of stuff, you know. The unity, you know, he brought up some points that when a farmer would would get into it with the other race, the Thangos wouldn't get into it. They would let them get smashed by the, the other race. But then the farmers, on the other hand, when it was a raza getting, you know, jumped on by another race, regardless of what organization they were, they would put that to the side and stand up for the raza. You know? That's a valid point too, right there, you know. He said that the blast did more, more harm to the Raza by dividing and conquering. He had a lot of good valid points, you know. There would be a reckoning if they were to be let out. And you will probably have a couple of recruitments. But with today's youth, 
I feel like if that was to happen, you'd have SNY protective custody here. Just like how you do in California. And I brought that issue up to him. And he said, you know, he clarified some things to me about how they handle over there. And, you know, they didn't make sense. But still, a lot of the population at SNY and protective custody in California, it's a bunch of youngsters that got a, did something wrong and they got thrown out. For whatever cause that they were doing, it's not following orders, you know, maybe, maybe simple last thing if it's, it's not going out and doing your exercise, you know, that you 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 would get unwelcome from these organizations in California. So I feel like the recruitment is real thin, you know. Today's youngsters have no loyalty. They're not really built like that no more. You know? I guess on the recruitment, <clears throat> it has to do on the individual as well. Because let's say for my example, I was 18 years old and I had a bullshit ass case. You know? But I still signed the paperwork anyway. You know, regardless, it's not even close to what I was doing on the streets to why I caught this bullshit case, mostly like a fucking family violence, you know, over my first baby mama. So they put me in the North Tower in Dallas County, the two men, the two men of cells in the North Tower. In the North Tower... It's an aggravated tank. I got a three-year sentence. I'm in there with people facing life, aggravated robbery, aggravated, you know, murder. You know, all, all, all the all, all the aggravated shit. You know, I'm 18. At that time, there weren't really that many young dudes. You know, I, I was the youngest dude in the tank. So I'm hearing all these stories from different people, you know. Everybody's trying to tell me a little bit of their story of their piece of advice, but it, it seems like it's all bad, you know. There's a white dude walking around, you know. He's he's sitting over there. He's picking at himself with the razor blade. He's trying to fucking take his tattoo off. You know, his, his name was Dirty Red. It was a dirty white dude named Red with red hair, freckles. He, he was a white knight. But he was trying to remove his patch by fucking scraping it with the with with the fucking razor blade from a from a shaver. So he's constantly picking at that shit. He lets it heal, picks at it again every other day. I'm like, man, why are you doing that? He's like, man, if I go back down there, which I know I'm going, they're gonna kill me if I they see if they see this patch on me. So I'm like, it's like it's like that. He's like, yeah, it's like that. So I'm hearing all this negativity, you know. I haven't heard nothing about Tango Blast at this moment. All I'm hearing is organizations. You know, my celly moves out. I get a celly. Can't remember his name. I don't remember that he has he had like a ponytail. Like long hair, but like he would put it put it in, in a ponytail. And he would I don't, he, he tatted me up right here on my chest with, with pick. And he was the one telling me other stories like, nah, you know, if, if you get there, you know, you're going to have to be told what to do. You know, you're going to have to. So they're telling me all, all this negativity, all this bad stuff, you know, and, and I'm like, shit, I'm going to go down there for three, you know, and I hear other people say, nah, you ain't, you're just going to go down there and get a picture took and you're going to come right back. You know, you don't worry about that. <clears throat> you ain't have to worry about them gangs down there. You know, you're just going to go down there, get a picture, and you come right back. So they said. So they, so I, I'm like, fuck it. You know, I'll probably go down there for two, three months, and I'll be home. 
So I don't, I'm hearing all this negativity. You know, I'm like, fuck. Another dude tell me, you know, you might go down there, you know, you, people go down to work short time. Sometimes they get more time. I'm like, how you gonna get more time? He goes, you're gonna have to be putting in some work. I'm like, work? You know, I don't know nobody about no fucking work. You know, I know work is on the streets. He goes, the same thing you were doing on the streets. Basically, you're going to do it in there. But without no gun. I'm like, bet. You know, what do you use? He goes, anything you can find. You know? So I'm hearing all this negativity, man. So I'm already sitting in mind to be like, fuck, what the fuck am I going to do? You know? This guy said I'm going to have to get down with somebody. You know, I'm 18, man. You know, I was already doing dirt on the streets, you know. So putting in work, that was nothing, you know. So when, when I get to Middleton, I meet homeboy. He's on the same bus. We go through the whole process. We go through the two week process of waiting for, waiting for our shit. Then we get transferred to the, the middle tent. And during this process, you know, he's, 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 he's telling me, you know, once we get moved over there, he, he starts lacing me up, you know? Once he sees me trying to get into a wreck and the way he laced me up was, hey, there's no commitment. You know, you do your time, you go home. You know, that made a lot more sense to me that I had a short sentence. You know, I wasn't going to be there that long. You know, the prison for me was just a place to go sit my ass down because I was moving too fast. You know. Two days after I got arrested, they found my best friend that was always with me. We were always together. They found him shot, stabbed, set on fire. And in the abandoned house in East Dallas, you know, two days after I got arrested. We got arrested together. They let him go. That's the last time I've seen him. You know, so, so prison to me was it my world, maybe if I had a longer sentence, maybe if I had a 25, 35, 40 something, maybe I would have joined an organization. I function more in structure, always have, always will, you know? But I didn't have that much time to make that commitment, you know? But let's just say, if I had different time, longer time, I think things would have been different. You know, most likely I would have probably joined one of these farmers. But that's just facing the reality of that was going to be my world. That was it. This is going to be for what it is, for, for whatever, how many years, you know? The mind of going home would have been out, would have been thrown out. I would have made that my world. But thank God that I was blessed to do just a little time. Ain't been back since, you know. But this is a little quick video, you know. Just a little quick dialogue with the subscriber. But y'all drop it down in the comments, man. What, what y'all think would happen if the tech syndicate would get released? You think they would be able to flourish again? And dominate the prisons or you think they would just get sagged up again for creating too much violence or you think it's possible for them to come out and just make a peace even through this blood shit been shed y'all drop it down in the comments man